Many thanks to you for standing the course with us this Friday morning. It's called Digest, a flagship program on Core TV News. And for more information, you can visit our social media platform. Of course, we'll display that much later uh, during the course of the program. We still have Akin Sholao Lufemi with us, um, a public affairs analyst. And now we're being joined by Shiji Bumi Adebiyi, also a public affairs analyst. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here once again. Mm. And uh, before you came, we've been talking about uh, the drama playing itself out in Adamawa State. And briefly, before we go to the second segment for today, what is your analysis or evaluation about what is playing itself out in Adamawa State at the moment? The swearing-in of Ingilari, who used to be the uh, former deputy governor of Adamawa State, and the going back of Fintiri as the Speaker of the House. What do you have to say about that? Um, for us, citizens that are not partisan, it's, um, it's a good thing. The Constitution has spoken again, which is okay for us. Because we have so many cases ongoing in the country now, whereby um, what we just need is for our judiciary to step up and just resolve all these issues. Because um, if you have a manual for an equipment, you must always operate by the manual. Well, in Nigeria, it's not the case most times because you just see people operating by their own personal uh, manual, not the uh, general manual, which is the constitution of the, na of the nation. Now, talking about the Adamawa case, I, I, I really appreciate um, the sagacity of um, the judge, and uh, I think it just um, brings to fore our quest for selfish ambitions again. Because um, if you are a politician and a sound one at that. Anytime issues like that come up, I think the best thing for the speaker to have done is at the time he was speaker, he has the resources around him. He should have public um, personal assistance, rather, should have legal advisors and all that. So the, the constitution is there for us, even there are no lawyers to, to interpret. They, it's just a straight call. This person must. Um, if um, upon resignation, things must be sub the letter of resignation must be su uh, submitted to the, 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 the speaker of the house. If it's in the case of the governor, in the case of the of the deputy governor, it has to be to the governor. But you know, when people are so consumed by own personal ambition, ambition uh, I stand to be corrected. They just kind of overlook every other thing and just jump the gun. And that was what we saw, but we thank God for the judiciary and we, uh, and, and we thank God for the constitution. Okay, uh, still on the issue of Adamawa, the, he mentioned earlier, uh, he commented about the speedy nature of the judgments that we had, that it, it came so fast that most of us were not even expected, expecting results and pronouncements that fast. But what do you say about this particular judgment, the speedy nature of this particular judgment in Adamawa and other cases that we, we've had as a country in a situation where the judiciary seemed to crawl over situations, especially when it comes to corruption and, you know, it keeps dragging in court and dragging in court and you get to forget what the case is all about in the first place. Comparing that to the nature uh, with which we know our judiciary, what do you have to say about the speed? I think it's obvious that um, what has been playing on in the country is um, it's, uh, it, it, it's interest. Now, you have cases dragging on for so long because one powerful figure or one powerful party is involved or is interested. Now, um, like I said earlier, we have to really give kudos to the judge. This is a straight call. It's just based on interpretation. You don't have to go to the university to interpret this. So, in as much as, and um, in Gilary, the, the, the governor, the, the, the present governor now, tried to even stop the elections. He lost on that count. That they should put, they sh there should be stay of proceedings in terms of the election that was supposed to come up on Saturday. But, but, but he lost on that. But we thank God that um, the real case, which is the validity of the of him resigning and um, of him being adjudged the the substantive governor, we thank God that he, he didn't lose that. So in this case, we, we have seen that you know when cases are just too obvious, you know where the parties interested, they just want to delay and just delay, play around till this thing fades off from even the consciousness of the citizens. 
So that's the, what, and justice delayed, like always said, is justice denied. But there's no way, you, what about the clamor for the abduct, abducted girls now? Sorry to digress about that. But you can see that the citizenry is losing consciousness of that because it's, uh, it has been going on and on for a very long time. So when things like that, when you mull over things like that and there, there is no result coming up in, on time, then people tend to forget. And that's um, a, a, a tool that parties in Nigeria always use. All right, this is where we get to switch over to the second segment for the day. And now we're talking about 2015 election, the lobby for Basanjo. And uh, in recent times, we had Tinubu, uh, uh, the leader of um, one of the leaders of the All Progressives Congress uh, Party, going to meet Obasanjo in a closed door meeting. And recently, when we had the defection of Benga Daniel of Ogun State and Olushegun Mimiko of Ondo State, we had people like um, uh, the party leader, PDP leader, Mwazu, Adamu Mwazu. We had the Senate president, David Mark, and even Benga Daniel himself begging for Obasanjo to come back to the party, giving reasons that he has this um, uh, thing for leadership. He's the leader of the party, he's a family, he cannot afford to neglect, and all of that. And because Obasanjo prays every morning, Olushago Obasanjo became a civilian president of this nation in the, since the inception of um, democracy, that is, after the uh, military rule since 1999, and he ruled for two terms. He was uh, a two-term president in Nigeria. And in recent times, after a letter that he wrote, an open letter to the president, we saw that he fell into an uneasy silence, and people have been wondering, what is it about the silence with Obasanjo? And some have raised issues about um, the commendations has been given the uh, opposition party about some states uh, controlled by the APC. And so people do not really know where these elder statesmen stand in the situation of things. And that is why we're discussing that this morning. And we still have uh, two guests ready in the studio, Akisha Lufemi and Shijibumi Adebi. Let me come to you, Akishola. How important is Obasanjo to the forthcoming election? Well, the politicians know how important it is to them. And that is where they are milling around him. Um, prior to this time, PDP wants to downplay Obasanjo. They want to prove that Obasanjo is not relevant to the electoral fortune. But don't forget that in 2013, the APC at the formative stage of the party went to consult him in Abeokuta. Then uh, Korocha, uh, Chinumbu, and host of others, governor part, governors of the party went to see him. He gave them audience. And uh, they warmed themselves into his heart. And at that time, he had fundamental disagreement with PDP. And this fundamental disagreement he had with PDP stemmed from the issue of Buruji Kashamu, Benga Daniel, and the, thought, uh, the, the return of Jonathan, which he claimed Jonathan told him personally that he will not be coming back in 2015. It's not because of any other thing. These three issues are fundamental reasons why Obasanjo had uh, disagreement with PDP. And these three issues, if they, have, they are not resolved, I do not see him coming back, uh, giving them 100% support the way he had always. Because he went to the extent on Buruji Kashamu to give them all the dossier, all the document, all the government, all the judgment of the U.S. Uh, court on him. He gave it to the government so that they can take action on the personality of Buruji. But the government decided not to do anything. Instead, they elevated him into Southwest uh, PDP coordinator and leader. That will anger Obasanjo naturally. Uh, even though events after that have shown that the US court recently said he has case to answer and that he will need to be extradited to US. That was about three weeks ago. However, these three reasons which Obasanjo gave has not been resolved. All this pleading that is a prayerful person by Moazu Mazu was governor of Bauchi State before. 
that is a prayerful person, he, preach, he, he pray from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. It's not an issue. It has not addressed the reason why the gentleman was angry with PDP. Uh, Benga Daniel, who derobed Obasanjo publicly when he was governor of uh, Ogun State, is now trying to clot him in privacy. He is against our culture. Uh, he made an attempt to see Obasanjo on Tuesday, but they did not allow him to enter Obasanjo's uh, filler. So he was turned back. And he went back to um, Abuja now to start pleading that he's their father, he should forgive them if they have seen or erred against him. Yes, the man is an old man, he know where his heart is. And he may not come out to make pronouncement. He equally said something through his aid that well, he's the father of the nation. Any political party that approach him, he will give them hearing. He may not actually say, I'm for you, I'm against you, but he will give them hearing because he's the father of the nation and he will listen to all political party that comes to him and he will cancel them. And address. Like, for example, we had a when APC went to him, he told them when they were asking that he should give them a, a, a signal about who should be the party... Uh, uh, flag bearer. I, he only said, choose somebody with clean record. He didn't say more than that. But don't forget, don't forget that the, the leader of APC, Ashiwaju Bola Tinumbu, when he was the governor of Lagos State, was not a friend of Obasanjo. They are not uh, friendly at all. It, we, we can recall that the fault of Lagos State uh, government, local government fund were held for a number of months without being released by the government of Obasanjo. But today, Tinumbu can approach Obasanjo for support. It shows that there is something innate in Obasanjo that is um, useful, that both parties are looking for. Mm. Um, what that usefulness in him is, I may not know, but they know because they are in the same... Uh, politics. They know the value he has in him. Naturally, in the Southwest here, they say Olawasanjo has no political value in Southwest. But you cannot rule out the fact that he has political value in other zones of the country. And don't forget that the president of this country, uh, Gulo Jonathan, has been playing an older than, older than thou life image for himself by saying everything he wants to do, he wants rule of law, he wants this and that. So they need a nascent man. Somebody that has a towering figure now, if they come up, they, they come up with anything mysterious, anything tyrannical, anything that is uh, not in tandem with rule of law, they will say, okay, this is the person who, who, who originated, who championed it because he has pedigree for that kind of thing. Because we remember, you know, Pastor just uh, second coming, he swept the vote in the Southwest without winning. And uh, he, he had he installed the governor. So they needed somebody who can come and do that for them in PDP now because you look at what they are doing everywhere. You know that they are very desperate to have uh, Southwest State back. And they believe if Obasanjo has done it before, he can do it again. Okay, Shijibomi, let, let's come to you now. He mentioned about uh, the relevance of Obasanjo to the fortune of the PDP come 2015. But we're asking, at a point, uh, APC was the bigger, biggest merger of all times. Matter of fact, it still is. But after that merger came, we saw the going back of some who used to be in PDP went to APC and now are back in PDP. And some still say, like it or not, PDP has the huge number. So I'm wondering what difference one man would make in giving given that number in 2015. Um, talking about passenger, I will say like the Yoruba culture connotes, we call him Baba. <laughs> but I, I will say one idea just summarizes everything. We, anybody that makes you can break you. Obasanjo was instrumental to good luck Jonathan being selected as the vice president to lead Yeradua. And regardless of any politics and strategy or plans that went about that time, as of that time, everybody believed from the south south, the man good luck Jonathan then was not the most popular 
no credible candidate to use. But for Obasanjo to have made sure that came about, then we must say he still has this, or he had, and I still believe he still has this influence on the nation. Then the second thing, even when Southwest people did not vote for Obasanjo, Obasanjo still won in the general elections against Toby Fali. Because as at that time, we all, we in the Southwest, all had sympathy for Abiola, and we chose to toe the line with um, Olufale. But he won. So, given all these, you know, assessments and all that, you should know that for that kind of man, and ev everything he says every time has always come to the fore as almost the truth if not the truth. When he told them about Kashamu, like he mentioned, Kashamu said he didn't have any case to answer. That it was because he worked with Obasanjo and they had a fallout. That that's why Obasanjo is now shouting his name all over the place. But two times after that period, the U.S. has stated categorically that this man has a case to answer. So for a man that has fact that still gets security security reports all over the nation and that even when you put him in one corner he just he doesn't say much but he can write a letter that will get the attention of the whole nation you don't play with that kind of man but uh, he uh, akin shola mentioned earlier that one of the issues uh Obasanjo has with the pdp is the bid for second term in office of President, good luck, Jonathan. But this coming from a man who served two times, that is during uh, the civil rule, and was matter of fact looking for a third term in office. How right do you think this this uh, demand is coming from a man like that? Um, I don't think we can really say he, he, he is angry with PDP just because good luck, Jonathan wants a second time. From his letter, which I read online, he did not categorically say that. He said, "You, from all the indications, it is obvious that you have the ambition to return as the president, not that you told me that you were, <laughs> you were not going to contest for a second time. But there have been insinuations here and there that good luck said to some people, which, but it's, you know... That is just something that was alleged. And for when two people go into verbal agreement, I think based on integrity, even if you have to change, you have to make the whole world know why you are changing. The same thing happened in Lagos State. Fajala said he wasn't coming for second time. And um, that it's only a student that, um, that is no good that repeats the class. But at the end of the day, everybody said, fine that this guy has tried, let him continue. So based on public opinion, based on popular vote, he came back. So we could understand that. So if there was a verbal agreement to that, I think the onus lies on the president to come out and say, okay, fine, there could have been insinuations or maybe references to the fact that I will not come back. But it wasn't something that was a statement of fact. Maybe inferences, references, and all that made people to conclude that. But because of popular, which people have been saying now, because he has done so much, there are adverts of TAN all over the place. Okay, if it is based on that, I want to return. That's fine. We're okay with that. All right, uh, I'll come back to you on the same question. Would you share his opinion, given the fact that almost the whole party endorsed Jonathan for a second term in office, demanding that he comes back? And like he also contributed, TAN has been on campaign for so long a time. But this man himself has not come out to say categorically that I'm going for a second term in office. Uh, this is politics for you. There are times that it is not expedient for you to come out categorically to say that you are contesting. You send your errand boys into the public to go and uh, fill the post of the nation and uh, sensitize the nation's post for you. But one area which I felt may have been 
distasteful to Obasanjo was that in politics, we have leaders. In every sphere of life, we have leaders, community leaders that you just have to contact before you take any step. And considering the fact that this is the person that brought you hope, naturally the first time, you owe him that responsibility to inform him. Even before you come out publicly or people go around the town telling everybody that you are coming for the second time or, or third time, to let the man know that, Baba, I'm interested in coming back for second time. Of course, up to now, information available from Obasanjo's quarter says that he is yet to be personally informed by Jonathan that is coming out for second time. He has not briefed Obasanjo. People who have been coming um, on his behalf may have been saying it, but Jonathan himself had not said it to Obasanjo, and that may have been distasteful to him. And um, this popular achievement people are clamoring at, we need to see it on the ground. Me, I have not seen much. Every time people are on strike, just uh, yesterday I heard that, uh, okay, this morning, the government has approved 534 million naira to pay the area of salary of uh, unity schools teachers who embark on strike about three or four weeks ago. Uh, very soon, ASUP may embark on strike again. They were on strike for a very prolonged time because the, the give, government said they needed one month. When Shekarao became minister, they gave three months. Up to now, nothing has been done. And FILA are saying that they may go back on strike. So we have this palpable um, feeling in the country. Nothing is going out right. The situation is so palpable. Economy is bad. There is no money in the economy. The situation is so terrible that everybody is living on credit now. And the government is saying it has done so much wonderfully well. They look at every slight opportunity to amplify their achievement. They are using Ebola now as an achievement slogan. But is it not an achievement? <laughs> is it not? They are using it as an achievement slogan, but the thing did not happen within the domain of federal government. It happened within the domain of state government. Even up to now, I'm yet to hear from state government that the 200 million naira the federal government uh, volunteered to give to the state government has been received because the last time the government, the governor speak, they did not receive anything from federal government. Or what they did on their own, they have tactical support, they have some support from federal government, they've always shouldered the cost of everything they did on their own. So if you want to claim achievement, you will show us what you put on the table that makes the things work that makes you to achieve what you have achieved. Not that when you send somebody on errand, he's using all his resources to do those work for you. After he has achieved those things without your grand support, you now claim the success of the person. It's, it's, it's not too good to me. Um, they said roads are good. Every day, accidents happen on the gossip on express road. TAN, Transformation Association of Nigeria, we, we flag and take picture of a good portion of the road flash it on the internet, on social media network to say this is what the government has done. They will go to Abuja, the uh, the lane road, they will take the picture and decorate it as if it's another road that is being replicated in another part of the country as achievement of the federal government. We all see this thing, we apply this road every time. We know how these roads are. We know what has been done and what has not been done. So you cannot just come and use uh, image process in the media to deceive person of my own Stature that you have done this, you have done that. When I cannot physically see those things on ground, each time we go to Ibadan through this same road, we know what we went through. That it is not easy for the citizenry to pass through Lagos State, Lagos Ibadan Express Road. Go to other other part of the country. Similar thing. This morning they said government has approved another one billion naira for the east-west road. This east-west road for how many years they've been constructing it? More than 25 years they've not achieved it, and they pump money into it every this money where is it going to east west road east west road east west road second second niger bridge nothing has been achieved today they will use it as a campaign slogan but what has what has been done so far on this project we're talking about okay let me come to shijibumi now fine there are there are other opinions in some quarters of uh, uh, going by what um, what Akinshola has said, saying that this particular administration has celebrated corruption. And you also mentioned the issue of Kashamo in PDP and the 
PDP seemed not to be saying anything about that case, even after Obasanjo has mentioned the case not just once. But then, don't you feel this might just be a plot by the opposition to make this administration look so bad? Because the president himself, while in a state, said this particular administration has achieved a lot, reducing poverty by 50%. <laughs> um, okay, let me answer that by first correcting what you said. Um, the governments of Lagos State and River State have received their share of the, the money. subvention. I think last week or two weeks ago, the um, Commissioner for, um, for Health in um, yeah, River State yeah. confirmed this. So, but that said, um, Good Luck Jonathan has really tried in some aspects. Because in our part of the world, we focus much on we magnify people's weaknesses, but we don't really talk about their strength. I think rule of law, a bit, and about election reforms, not yet there. But one thing I find very, very uncomfortable with in his government is corruption and impunity. So it's not like the opposition is trying to because so many times when you when you talk and it affects the APC, you are a PDP person. Sometimes when you talk and it affects the PDP, then you are an APC person. And it's very, very unfortunate that the Nigerian youth does not want to see things. Go to Facebook and just read people's comments. Nobody is objective anymore. They're either here or there. And whatever this party does, if it's their own party, it's just all correct. And I think we must leave that here. We must just be objective. Part of the things I said about Gulag Jonathan, based on, it's not somebody that's very popular with me, fine. But, you know, Lagos by the Expressway that we're talking about, we know how many years some construction companies, we put big box that we're working anytime a president is visiting Lagos State or the Southwest. For years, nothing was done on those roads. We know that those roads are not rehabilitated well, or they are, some new ones are not even constructed well, but this person has started something on those roads. And we can really see they have started something. Not when we hear millions or billions, and it's only placards or b bots we see. Anytime somebody is visiting from, from, from Abuja. So, but impunity and um, corruption, no matter what you do, you cannot try. The country cannot try. When you have people in your government that have made very costly mistakes, and they're still there, and you've not done anything to address those issues, it's not an APC issue. It's not that the APC is trying to magnify those things. There are real things there. They are just basic facts of life. Somebody was responsible for 20 people being maybe killed or maybe as a result of stampede just because of immigration employment and the person is still in your government when somebody in South Korea resigned just because a private boat capsized. capsized. The way we think in this country is very, very funny. And we have people, 10 billion on chartered flights going to court to restrict the legislation from probing and nobody is saying anything that's the kind of country we live in so so many times it's not the apc issue when you talk about it you talk about some little achievements and changes we can see here and there but you talk about the impunity and corruption they're just over there and that's what obasuja has been saying coming back to this question you can say obasuja was corrupt himself you can say he tried to get a third time he didn't achieve it fine We've left that, it's left for us citizens to swallow any bait you throw at us. But if we don't swallow, then that means we still have our senses intact. So we've left that. Now for you now, telling an ex-president, telling somebody about another party person's antecedents, and you are trying to use the person to project the image of, the, of your party in the Southwest, 
we can talk about all these personalities. They are in every sector. Even some have contested elections. Those things are still in the judiciary. It's not about somebody having popular vote or not. It's about, is this person impeached or not? Let the, the, the judiciary talk. So that next time, Nyako will not come back and even contest an election in Nigeria again. So oh. those are the fillers. Okay, uh, let's go to the issue of Obasanjo as um, an important factor in the play out to 2015 elections. We know two parties are lobbying for this one man. Who we say is important in the situation of things. What do you see Obasanjo end up? Um, two party, APC and PDP. PDP. Yes, of course. But don't forget that PDP is consuming other party. Now, APGA is indirectly almost aligning with PDP. Labour Party is in As crisis it, yes, because they are being subsumed by PDP. Most, the, most of their governors are back to PDP. And this is in um, preparation towards 2015 because they are looking at the APC fold as being larger than expected. So they have to find a way of rivaling them. Now, Obasanjo's expectation of Obasanjo. Don't forget that Obasanjo has ruled this country for eight years as a civilian president. And in those eight years, he has his own boys all over the country that, like he said, he makes. Uh, if you look at his antecedent, how he came to be the president from prison to become the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria. He was invited. The structure of PDP was on ground already. He did not contribute to the structure of PDP. And people were even believing then that it will find it, it, will find it difficult to manage and rule the affair of the country because he was an invitee. Somebody invited to come and partake in something and it's not, a, it's not part of the founder of the party. But successfully, he wrestled the power of PDP from those who funded it and started installing his own boy everywhere. Even the major financier of PDP Group 17 that time, uh, Atiku Abubakar became almost relegated to the background that if not for uh, a, a serious intervention, he could have been impeached. But it shows the relevance of, 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 of Obasanjo, how tactically he is, how strategical thinking he is. And you cannot uh, overlook the, the, the intelligence of that, time, of that kind of person. Because those who have worked with him, they always hold him in ism. They said he's very, very intellectual when it comes to uh, manoeuvring in politics. And now he does that at his age, only God knows. So the parties, APC, must have sat down and analyzed what are we going to gain if we make enemies of this man? What are we going to gain if we make friends of him? Lai Mohammed said, oh, their leader, Ashwaji Bolati Numbu, is doing what he's doing for Nigeria because if he has gone to Obasanjo, he's doing it because of Nigeria, because what is he going to lose if he did not go to him? If he has something he will gain for Nigeria by going to Obasanjo, why, would, why won't he go to him? David Ma comes to him leading a, 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 a party members to reconcile the party with Obasanjo, thinking that they will go out of that place with promises. But Obasanjo fell short of giving neither party any promises, only counsel them and advise them to go back. He told um, David Mark and his group that he's still a, a, a card-carrying member of PDP. He has not said he's not a member of PDP. But that does not mean that if other people come to him, he will not attend to them. That whatever he can do, he will do, but not, not to the extent they may be expecting him to do it. So, Obasanjo has a electoral follow, and uh, the parties understand that, and they cannot wish him away like that. So, that may be responsible for the way they are approaching him now, because what we have left, just five months, and whoever has his ear may actually uh, have an upper hand, the way they may be thinking, because don't forget, 
most of the people who have served in his government are still relevant in the system. In his two-term government, several ministers, several special assistants, several special advisors, several local government chairmen, governors that work with him are still living and they are in the, and they are in the country. So if Obasanjo call any of them that go and do this for me, they will listen to him because he had helped them when he was president of this country. So he still has contact here and there and they are still respecting him. Okay, rounding off now, I'll still ask you the same question. He said that Obasanjo has not come out to say I'm no longer a member of PDP. He actually said he's still a card carrying member of PDP. So are we saying it is possible for him to go back to PDP? Or because of these uh, allegations or the problems pointed out by him that he has with PDP, he goes to APC, or he just remains a neutral elder statesman? Um, I believe at his age, you know, he has a lot of wisdom just to remain an elder statesman. He told them when he brought up the issue of Kashami that he remains a PDP member, but he will not contribute any, in any way to the party's um, activities in the Southwest if the man Kashamu still remains the the leader in the south a leader in the southwest so i think at his age he, he, he just knows that he needs to pray now it's um he is old enough to be the father of the nation then he has a lot of experience and don't forget that in apc he has so many boys in pdp he has so many boys erufai is trying to contest for the guba election in adamawa and he's a person just boy whether we like it or not so all those things put together he will always welcome any party that comes to visit him and i think he is not it will not yield it is not a question of coming back to pdp because he's still in pdp but it will, it will not cross carpet and it will not even do anything so serious in terms of activities and involvement he will just advise and let it be anything that <laughs> will be will be and i think that's his own ideology for now <laughs> yes, and sir, that's sir. how we end it on the program this morning it's been akishola lufemi and shijibumi adebi both public affairs analysts and i hope you'd oblige us again next time yes. no problem all right thank you very much and talking about the government being responsible to its people the soul of every human under government should be accountable for and we're saying this because of the cops that's been at Fagbim's junction that is in Ogun State so we're calling on relevant authorities in Ogun State to please attend to these cops because it's been there for over a week now and I think it has become a tradition that when uh, we find corpses along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway uh, they are not taken away until we start to see the bones and skeletons so we call on relevant authorities to please help even if this person is dead is still valuable to us at least he has families and friends and you know he has people connected to him so please we would like as i speak right now the body is still there if these authorities can please attend to it because it is not comfortable for those using that road thank you so much for being there with us this morning tomorrow we will continue on core digest and of course with a more exciting topic thank you so much i am Ebulomo adekunle Nigerians continue to Night, travel the in city of Lagos. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Our federal we host. break the news. We one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. Our 24-hour news station.